just honky ever home. It's both mystery and a tragedy. I don't want to feel the worst. A young girl in her 20s has everything to live for. She go right there. Video footage shows that she was walking toward and past her car. I kept looking at the video all that night. This may hold a clue to what happened to her. Wednesday, October 3rd, 2018 was an unusually warm fall day in Chicago with a high of 88 degrees. In the Chatham neighborhood on the south side, Karen Phillips was feeling good. Her daughter, Kiera, was doing so well. Any sense of that something was wrong? No. She was the star. She was the bright spot in this family. Regina Waldrop, a veteran reporter for NBC5, was about to cover a story that would stay with her for years to come and bring back terrible memories of her own. I was 11 years old, and uh, I just remember how frantic my parents were. Waldrop, now the mother of a young daughter herself, would soon develop a bond with Karen Phillips. I connected with her immediately. She looked in my, in my eyes and she said, Regina, I haven't been sleeping. I don't want to eat. I don't want to close my eyes. I just want my daughter to come home. Her daughter, Kiara Coles, was the fourth of Karen Phillips' five kids, each name beginning with the letter K. Kim, Keisha, Kendrick, and Kiana. But Kiara always seemed to run the show. In charge of the yeah, other in kids charge. in your family? Yeah. <laughs> with her trying to always be in charge of everybody else's situation. Karen describes her daughter as extremely driven working two jobs, driving for Lyft and sorting mail for the post office part-time, trying hard to become a full-time postal employee. She worked like three years temporarily at the post office. She kept saying, I'm gonna go back every year to their hire me. At age 26, Kiera had a checklist of things she wanted to accomplish. Like, I'm gonna save up, I'm gonna give me an apartment. She did that. I'm gonna give me a reliable car. She did that. She was in love with a man she'd been dating for six years. Did you think he was good for her? Yeah. He had manners, you know, just speaking and never raised his voice in my house. And Karen says they were now 12 weeks pregnant with a baby Kiera couldn't wait to raise. We was all excited for her to have a child. She was just so happy. She showed off her ultrasound picture. No word on whether it was a boy or girl. You were close? Yes. Talked every day? Every day. But on Wednesday, October 3rd, her phone didn't ring. And Karen's calls went unanswered starting at 8 a.m. I knew it was something wrong when her phone kept going to voicemail. She's an adult in her 20s. Is it possible she just went off on her own? No. We was too close for her to just run off. She says Kira seemed happy and excited about the baby when they last spoke the night before, Tuesday around 7 p.m. She was just saying that she wasn't going to work too hard because she don't want to endanger the baby, you know, like have a miscarriage. Kira had also been careful because she suffered from asthma, which she kept in check with an inhaler. <sighs> Kira was off work that day and said she planned to buy groceries. What if she collapsed carrying the bags inside? Could you see in the window? No, you couldn't see in the window. Karen rushed to Kira's place and banged on the door. Could you hear anything inside? Only the TV. The TV was on, but nobody answered. Now very worried, she called Kira's boyfriend to bring a key. She said he told her he didn't have one and had not seen Kira all day, but would come over right away. She also called 911. When police arrived, they took the hinges off the door and went inside. It was just empty. Any sign of a struggle? No. Anything out of place? No. Just a TV left on, the groceries she purchased put away. Their attention turned outside where her car was usually parked. It wasn't there, but it was nearby. Her car was down the street. Down the street, Even almost. Even though there were open spots yeah. in front of the apartment. Yeah. I found that kind of strange right in the beginning, but, you know, so much was going on. Why would she park down the street, especially when she had groceries to carry inside? They called the locksmith to open the car. What do you see inside? The purse and the cell phone. But the purse she was using for a lunch bag because it had uh, prenatal vitamins, an apple, an orange, and a water. Untouched as though she were heading to work. But Karen found out later Kira had called out sick and wasn't going to be working that day. Mom held her breath as they checked the trunk. Anything inside? It was her work stuff, like a work jacket, the little pushing thing that they pushed the mail around in. Again, nothing out of place. A life stopped in midstream. The news soon broke that a pregnant postal worker had disappeared without a trace. Help bring my baby home. A parent's desperate Thank plea. Thank you for stopping. We went to the area and there she was handing out flyers and I approached her. I said, my name is Regina Waldrop. Um, I want to tell the story about your daughter. Waldrop did not tell Karen Phillips her older sister had gone missing back in 1983. 
Knowing the details would be too upsetting. I was transported back to years ago. My sister had been drugged in a club and she had been raped and she was gone missing for two weeks. Waldrop knew from her own experience that time is critical in every missing person's case. She was surprised to see Kira's car still on the street. It's down the street from her apartment. I'm with another reporter and we look right in the car. We can see her purse sitting there open and, and we're so surprised because why is the car still sitting here? Hadn't been towed anything. We're wondering had it been fingerprinted? Does it have clues to where she might be? Her apartment building right here. Right. Victims advocate Andrew Holmes went door to door looking for clues. He quickly noticed surveillance cameras nearby. Video surveillance came from the building here, which is exactly uh, two buildings down. Waldrop was knocking on doors too when she heard a woman's voice. A woman calls down and says, hey, my husband, he has video. I go upstairs, he's walking us through this video. He's saying, there she is, there she's walking down the street. You see her, she's in her pulse uniform. That's her, that's her. How big is that moment? I, it's earth shattering because I think this is video of her walking towards her car. This may hold a clue to what happened to her. Why would she walk past her own car? You know, that remains to be answered. Uh, she may have seen someone she knew. Was she leaving with someone to start another life no one knew about or being lured to a place of no return? I'm thinking that she's walking to somebody's car, so all the video that they took off the block that we'll be able to see exactly what car she got into and, you know, possibly have a license plate. Why would she be wearing her uniform if she's off work? I was thinking maybe she decided to go back, maybe she decided to go in or she just put the uniform on. Chicago police declined to talk about any aspect of the case. They have not named any suspects or persons of interest. So we showed our reporting to retired Chicago homicide detective Rich Shack, who now heads the criminal justice department at National Lewis University. A young pregnant woman is missing. Who's the first person you want to talk to? The father of the baby. What questions for the father of the baby? Last time you saw her, how did you feel about the baby? Were you thinking about getting married? Did you talk about support? Karen Phillips had questions for the boyfriend, too. A fellow postal employee named Josh Simmons. First, she says, Simmons told her he did not have access to Kiara's apartment. I said, you ain't got no key. And then he was like, no, nah, which Kiara did tell me she had gave him a key. Karen has even more questions about what she says his behavior was in the days after the disappearance. Did the boyfriend go door to door with you when he knocked on doors? No. Did he hang up the posters? No. Did he talk to you? He left town. I just can't understand. You dated my daughter for six years, and then now that my daughter is pregnant and missing, you do nothing. Karen says he moved to another state with the mother of two more of his children, a woman Karen says her daughter was not happy with. She had a fight with the other baby's mother, and she was banned from coming to his house. And remember that crucial video evidence? Karen says something began to bother her as she watched the tape play on the news. It's the mother thing, you know, you just know your child. That's not her walk? No, that's not her walk. Is that her size? A little bit smaller and a little bit shorter. She says police confirmed what she feared. That hopeful clue was not a clue at all. That was not Kiara on the tape. He says not. Don't tell nobody that that's not your daughter. Karen says it turns out another woman who worked for the post office lived nearby, and that was her, not Kiera. And she says police held it back, perhaps to deceive any real suspects into thinking they were chasing a false lead. Why are you telling us now when the police told you two years ago not to say anything? I didn't say anything because I didn't want to mess up the case. I don't have nothing to lose now. I mean, it's been two years. Y'all ain't came up with nothing. The timestamp on the wrong video showed Wednesday at 11.54 a.m. Karen now figured whatever happened was hours earlier, sometime before her first unanswered call to Kiara around 8 o'clock Wednesday morning and their last conversation around 7 o'clock the night before, Tuesday. Karen says she's seen another neighbor's video of Kiara and Simmons leaving her apartment in separate cars on Tuesday and says police told her they have pictures of the couple going to an ATM. They said that they had video of Kiara and Josh at an ATM Tuesday. Did they tell you how much money was taken out? Kiara withdrawn $400, giving it to him. Chicago police would not confirm or deny any of this. The ATM video or the video Karen says she saw of Kiara and Simmons leaving in separate cars. And we can't independently verify that information.
Again, police have not named a person of interest or suspect, including Josh Simmons, and we found no criminal history in his past. We did find an address for him in Louisiana, but he did not respond to letters we sent there asking for comment. Does Chicago have the resources to go down and surveil him in another state? Would you do that? Probably not, unless you had something really concrete to cause you to go do that. In other words, you came up with a witness or he bragged to somebody. If Kira was murdered, how hard is it to prosecute a murder case without a body? Well, the body tells you what happened. If it's a homicidal cause of death, that helps you in your prosecution. When you don't have the cause of death or the body, it's difficult to show that there was actually a murder that took place. Sadly, he says what's not difficult is disposing of a body if you have time before anyone is looking. It now seems whatever happened could have been 20 hours before Karen Phillips called 911. If Kira was murdered, how would they get rid of the body that fast? That's the question for the ages, but you could easily put them in the bottom of a dumpster wrapped in something, and next thing you know, the body's in a landfill. Never to be found again. Never to be found. Chicago police released a statement saying they're working this investigation with the Postal Inspection Service and the FBI. Postal investigators tell us they've had 400 leads and say they can't imagine the level of pain, grief, and frustration felt by Kara Cole's family. They're offering a $25,000 reward for information leading to her whereabouts. Karen Phillips is making an appeal to Josh Simmons. What do you want to say to him tonight? That I wish he would come in and talk to the police. I always gave him the benefit of the doubt from day one. Even when people were saying, you know, it's the boyfriend, I'm like, don't do that because we don't know, because we don't know what happened. I think Karen's at the realization that Kiera is not coming home. She's not ever going to come home. Regina Waldrop says her sister Valencia was found alive after she was attacked years ago, but she struggled through a difficult life ever since. Waldrop hopes Karen Phillips gets some answers someday. The biggest thing for me, I guess, is that wasn't Kiera walking to her car. That wasn't her daughter. So many of us believe that she was still alive when she may have already been gone. Karen tries not to think about what might have happened to her daughter and the grandchild she never got to know. Each day, she prays for a good night's sleep, knowing her nightmare will begin again when she wakes up. What do you want people to know? I just want them to know that they wouldn't be begin to understand the pain that I go through. Just think if it was your child, your sister, your brother, your mother, and I just really wish somebody would have a heart and just leave an anonymous tip.